yeah, looking forward to it, to be honest with you, um, guys. Um, Towson's a heck, of a, a heck of a football team. Uh, a lot of different faces, a lot of new faces on there. We haven't played them in a while. Um, they had a very convincing win against Morgan State down there in their opener on the road. Um, Robbie Ambrose is taking over the play calling and the offense. Again, they're going back to old school Towson football where they're going to run the football with a very good tailback transfer from Georgia Tech, Jerry Howard. Um, Chris Ferguson's their quarterback, and I don't know if many of you recognize the name. He was the starting quarterback at Maine for three years. Um, had a hell of a game against us up there in 2018 in the opener. Good football player. Big offensive line, very athletic uh, defensive uh, front seven. Going to be a, a, another CAA war out in, uh, out, out in Cowell Stadium, Wildcat Stadium, whatever you want to call it when we get together here, guys. Very, very similar. Yeah, you know what I mean? Um, again, he's a drop back passer with, 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 with decent mobility. He's a pocket passer. Uh, he was very accurate in, in the game against Morgan state. Um, when you watch him, uh, go through his, his reads as you, as you see him progress through what he's doing there, you know, he's a kid filled with confidence. This is a kid that started for three years in Maine, transferred to Liberty, played down there for a year, and now ended up transferring back to Towson to get an opportunity to play again. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he he did a great job directing traffic up in Maine and uh, took him to the playoffs, did a hell of a job with, with everything. Um, when he left up there, I know they were very, very, very nervous because uh, they, they felt that he had a, 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 a great understanding of the offense that Maine runs. You know, now he's had a lot of time with Towson. They haven't played a game, they didn't play last spring. A lot of time of practice, a lot of time with camp. He looked very comfortable in his position out there playing. Uh, Justin, they've got to work it. They, you know, again, <clears throat> those big guys are big guys. And you, you can't stand up against them because if you stand up against them, they're going to roll you off like road graders. They're going to knock you back. And they're going to run the football downhill. They're going to run power. They're going to run uh, inside zone. They're going to run ISO, split zone. They're going to run a lot of different things that are physical downhill plays. So our pad level is important. And then the other thing is staying in gaps, staying in gaps. You know, not just our defensive line, but our linebackers and safety has got to do a great job of filling the gaps they're responsible for in the run and then have their eye open for play action pass. Being a good run stopping defense over the last three years. You know, and I think these guys have a pretty good idea of where they fit and where they go. I was very pleased with, you know, with the way that, you know, all three of our linebackers played Bryce Shaw, Zadane Williams, and Ryan Toscano. And, and again, all three of those guys, this is only their second game in a UNH uniform. Then. So, you know, you, you go through with it, pretty pleased that they were there, you know, obviously Ole's out and he's not here. And, you know, those three guys got to carry the load. I was pretty impressed with what they did. Our safeties, I think Pop Bush statistics felt, uh, spoke for itself. And I thought Evan, and I really was pleased with Noah Stansberry. So those, you know, six, seven guys that got to fill the gaps did a decent job, but, but, this is a different bird coming in here with the size and the, and the power in the backfield of Howard. Uh, you know, Rob's record speaks for itself. He took his team to the national championship games, had him in the playoffs, you know, numerous years. Um, he has built that program from basically a Division II program. And when he took over a couple of years into being one double A, he took it and, and put his fingerprints and blueprints all over everything. You know, he, he's, he's, his football teams, have, 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 when they've been good, have been tailback oriented downhill running, a physical, strong, big offensive line, and a swarming defense. Showed up again last week against Morgan State. I know he's taking more active part in what he's doing. Um, the, uh, I, I've always, always been impressed with the way that Towson has played football down there since Rob took over. Great to have our, our students back, in, you know, and, and we're looking forward to it. It's a night game at 6 o'clock. I think the, uh, everybody in the, in, the, in the area, everybody in the university, and everybody in the state, is looking forward to having an opportunity to come watch a good football football game. More importantly, enjoy the tailgating, enjoy the experience of college football. You just look across the board, you know, um, if you're going to follow it. And fortunately, I got to watch some football last weekend after we played on Thursday. Those crowds and the excitement those people brought to it, pretty cool thing. So I hope, knock on wood, everybody shows up, everybody does it. Our students come out in full force. We get them into the game and they have a great time, Chris. I thought... I thought our quarterback, Brett Edwards, did a nice job in controlling the football game and playing within his, within his framework. And what I mean by playing within his framework, 
you know, he did some very nice things on some 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 scrambles, uh, kept the plays alive, made some throws and made some plays. He also kept the plays alive, rolled out and decided it wasn't good for him and threw the ball away. You know, it kept us from getting ourselves in long situations. I thought the first half we handled the ball extremely well, was disappointed in the second half with the way that we dropped the ball on the ground uh, two or three times. And we hadn't done that all fall camp and hadn't done that in a long time. Got to go back to securing the football. I thought Carlos and Lobby uh, were, were, were good at what they did. I thought Espinette had a hell of a game. You know, um, looking forward to seeing these guys play again here in our place, see how they look in the home crowd. You know, it, it starts with Evan, and here's a kid who's been a two-year captain now, and he was voted by his teammates. I made the decision in camp uh, that uh, the four surviving you know, seniors that were there deserved it, and, and they deserve it for a lot of reasons because not only the way that they have stayed sustained and gone through six years of being around me, but more importantly, what they've added to this program. And every one of those kids from Nick Warden to uh, Eli Lewis and Matt Mascia have been integral parts and have all played a lot of football for us. They are unit leaders. And, and when we talk about unit leaders, these are the guys that vote, are voted in by their teammates that are in their position to lead the units. And all four of those guys have done a great job. Seniors, um, all of them are, 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 are playing very good football at this point. We're pretty excited about where they're going. So I'm happy to see what they're doing, happy to see what, see that they're captain and they deserve it. Right? Tight, high, that. high and tight, high and tight, high and tight, Justin. Just mentally remember that, you know, you look at the two fumbles, uh, both of them were straining for extra yards. Um, you know, uh, Isaac, uh, Isaac C was working a break, he broke a good run, was trying to get a little bit more let his elbow get out, flipped out, and they punched it out. Carlos was struggling to get a couple more yards. Arm came out, flipped up. Just keep reiterating through the thing, high and tight the whole time with him so that they know where to put the ball and put it away. Go back to the defense for a second and the, and the defensive front. But how about the game Nico played? What, what, what kind of game did he have, and how important is he this week, given the size of these guys? Yeah, you know, Nico is a talented defensive lineman. You know, he was preseason all-conference. Uh, two years ago, you know, and then we didn't play last year and he had an outstanding game against Albany. You know, he's very athletic. He is very smart. Guys, he's in tune to what's going on uh, in splits, what's going on in alignments, what down to distances. He's, he's got great football instincts and he has great football knowledge. I think that helps him an awful lot, his athleticism. He had one great summer working through it. Uh, being up here the whole summer got stronger. Uh, he had a shoulder injury that he finally got a chance to, to, to lift full out of the weight room. So I think he's added not only, you know, some size, some power and strength, but it goes along with his athleticism. You know, he's a talented kid. He's the anchor of the defensive line right now. Jake going into this one, Roger, a couple of nicks and bruises. Hopefully everybody will be ready to go by Saturday. Okay. I, I, I always love the way that Pop has played the game of football. You know, he's a downhill player and doing it. Um, again, uh, I think his football IQ has improved tremendously. And uh, he knew what they were in. He knew what they were doing. He did a great job uh, on uh, one of the inside runs, punching the ball out. You know, watch the little things he does. And, and, and it's accumulation, I think, of two or three years of playing experience. And, and, and it's contagious leading to the rest of the team to know how he plays. And, and, you know, did I expect him to play like that? Yes, I always do. I think he's a hell of a football player. Um, the production that he had was off the charts. Let's hope he continues that, Justin. He does that, we're going to be in good shape, my man. Hey, um, first time in, in over two years. Um, hey, yeah, I mean, you kind of want to get back into the drawing board right away and see where you could have done better as an athlete. But uh, getting on that long bus ride home with a W at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's all you can really ask for. Good our assignments. Um, we, were, we were playing good uh, gap sound defense in the first half. Uh, kind of let that slip a little bit um, in, in the third quarter there. Uh, fields got out of the pocket a little bit. Um, we weren't really in our pass rush lanes. We were kind of getting giddy off the ball uh, a couple times. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we kind of reined ourselves in, and um, we were able to execute when, it, when we needed to most in the fourth. And, yeah, I mean, all we can really do on our side of the ball is play gap sound and get 11 dents in the ball, and we should do our job. Big boys. Big boys up front um, um, for, for the D-line uh, specifically. Um, Chris can throw the ball. He can sling it. Uh, unlike uh, Fields of um, Stony Brook, 
he's not going to get out of the pocket that much. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll make, he'll make some moves, but it's not going to be to the extent of um, what we were used to last week. Um, so that, that kind of bodes well for us, but on the, on the other side of things, he can, he can tote the rock, he can sling it. Um, so, and we've seen in the past when he was playing for that team up North um, a few years back and um, kind of got to rein him in up, up front and, and kind of put some pressure on him, help out the back half. I mean, when it comes to confidence going into games, I, I do I do usually feel, I mean, at this stage of my career, it was very different in the beginning. Uh, when I first um, was going to play against Chris, it was a completely different uh, ball game. Uh, it was my first year here. Um, being able to kind of have an, a, a way I prepare during the week helps me out a lot. Um, do I feel pretty confident going against him? Absolutely. Um, I'm at the stage now where if I if I felt otherwise, I don't I don't think I did my job during the week coming to Saturday. Um, so yeah, I, I do feel pretty prepared. I haven't played him in the past. Does does that really make a difference? No, I don't think so. Uh, a lot of athleticism, speed, and athleticism. Um, uh, he he had some good plays. Um, he was close a couple times on Thursday. He's he's still looking to get home and uh, and finish. Um, hopefully he'll get there soon. Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe, maybe this Saturday with a with a pocket with a quarterback that sits in the pocket a little bit more, that he'll get there. Um, but yeah, I, I love the way he played. He played tough. Um, again, Stony Brook was a big, big old line. Uh, he was playing against some big tackles, and he, he was able to hold his own in there. As, as a player, as a team, that's everything. Um, that that what that's what makes Tuesday to to, to Friday worth it. Um, as an athlete, for me at least. Uh, get, getting back in the stadium, having people cheer for you um, brings it brings a whole different kind of morale to the game. Stay low, stay low, uh, get off the ball. The faster you get off the ball, the better off you are in any situation. Um, and if we're moving, move fast. That's those are the three things. Get off first and foremost, but if we're stunting up front, do it quick. If you're playing base, stay low. Definitely. Uh... Last week was a great win, a uh, great team win on the road. We got it done on both sides of the ball, and uh, now we got to get back to work, fix what we did wrong last week, and um, attack St uh, Townsend with, with every, everything we got. What do, what do you see from them, Brett, you know, defensively? What, you know, what do they do well? What are you, you know, what are you expecting? Yeah, uh, they got some big boys up front, like Nico said, on the O-line, but D-line's the same way. Uh, they got some big dudes up there. Backers are pretty good. Uh, they got a couple transfers in the backfield um, at DBs. They're pretty good also. So we're going to face a good defense. Um, I think a little bit better than last week's. So we got a big challenge ahead of us at home, and we got to defend our turf. Um, obviously, as a quarterback, you want to make the right play like every down. But sometimes the play is going to break down, and you got to you got to keep your same field position. You can't take a loss of five yards, ten yards. It's just going to kill a drive. So. When I scramble and I don't see anything, I my next decision is to run or throw it away. And if I don't have a a, a lane to run, I'll throw it away and, and keep us in a good down for a, a position in the down so we can try to convert. I mean, we repped that in practice probably four or five times that week. Um, we hit it every time. So going into the game, it was like, yeah, like we're going to hit this play at one, one point. I didn't think it was going to be a 65-yard a touchdown, but it worked out. and um, yeah, it's just back to the practice. We have good practices during the week and, and convert our plays then, then it'll, it'll work during the game. That play Lois made was was probably one of the best plays of the game, honestly. Uh, he made a block on the edge, picked it up, he got back up and then and ran with me down the field, made another block, which allowed me to get 10, 12 yards down the field, which is which is great. And um, yeah, during again, back to practice, uh, we really key in on blitzes during the week. So So when the game comes like, just comes natural to us and, and we can just react. Um, but yeah, running backs are doing great. Um, it's just, they're just so, I'm just so happy to have them back there with me. It's, it's amazing. I can't can't wait to get out there on Saturday night in, in front of our crowd um, on our home turf. It's It's been a while. Um, we obviously had one game last year, but it didn't work out as we wanted. So this year we come out firing, defend our home turf every time and uh, hopefully get this dub this weekend.
we got into the locker room and and Mac was just uh, he was just so excited for us and we, we got to singing our song and we sang it loud and with proud and um, it was just awesome like the whole team just came together you could just feel the locker room was just in great spirits and um, it was again it was just great to go on the road and get a win and then come back here this week and do the same thing.